What's up everyone, it's me Prince again, and I know it's been a while, but you know what, I just had to take a break real quick uh, from YouTube because I had so much work going on from school to scholarship applications to everything going on, but you know what, I'm back and I'm going to kick it off with a, on a high note, and we're coming with the huge project, the PC Build Guide video. Now, if you don't know, in the past I made a couple of videos talking about my PC that you can see right next to me right here, the Wildcat as I call it, and I went over all the parts from it and the benchmark scores, and so now I actually want to show you guys how to build a PC because I found out that a lot of you guys don't know how to build one and are actually interested in building one for yourself so you can either save some cash or just have some fun with the project. So you know what, today we're going to teach you guys how to build a PC in a step-by-step -step guide. Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Now when I bring up building a PC, the first thing I hear is either one of two things. Either how hard is it to build a PC or if it's not that hard, what materials will I need because I know it's got to be probably like a whole bunch of special equipment that I don't have access to. And in reality, it's the answer to those, both of those questions is actually not much. Uh, it's not that hard to begin with. Uh, now of course there are going to be a lot of steps and it will take some time. Definitely devote a good afternoon to actually building the PC and a bit of time before that researching and watching a couple of guides. Of course mine isn't the be all and end all. I definitely recommend checking out some of the videos on building a PC. Uh, and also when it comes to the second question, uh, in terms of tools you're not going to need much besides a Phillips head screwdriver which I'd be surprised if you don't already have one actually. Now while I may have just said that you only really need a screwdriver to build a PC, the other thing you may want to look into if you're a first time builder and you're building either in a humid environment or if you're building on rough carpet, uh, you may want to look into an electrostatic wrist strap. Now these straps are supposed to be able to ground you from whenever you're building a PC or working with electrical components which are sensitive to electrostatic discharge. Without further ado, let's actually start building this PC and get into the guide. Now, the first step to building your PC is to install the CPU. To accomplish this, you're going to find the CPU socket in the top center of your motherboard where you're going to find a cover and a latch next to it. To install the CPU, you're going to push down on the latch and push it out to then release the cover which will then expose the pins on the motherboard. You're going to then find your CPU and locate the little triangle that's in the bottom corner of it and match that up with the triangle on the motherboard. That's going to give you the proper orientation for installing your CPU, which you're then going to take and slowly and gently slide into the socket. Now this should require no force as these are zero insertion force boards and CPUs, which means again, you shouldn't require any force to install this. In the case that you were successful, you should be able to gently wiggle around the CPU in the socket just to make sure it's in the proper orientation. From here, you're then going to close down the cover with the black cover on top still. You're going to drop the cover down and then push the lash down and apply a bit of pressure. And just to warn you, you may hear some creaking or cracking coming from the motherboard. Now nothing's actually been damaged, it's just that there's going to be a whole lot of force on the motherboard that's going to be applied with this lever. So don't worry, it's normal, and you can actually hear my actual installation have a couple of creaks in it too. Getting back to the build, you're going to want to keep that little black cover that you just saw fly off as that will be necessary in case you ever need to return your motherboard or resell it as the manufacturers require that that's there to prevent any damage coming to the board. So just put that away inside the motherboard's box and we can continue with the build. Now the next step in building your PC is going to be installing your RAM. The first step in doing this though is going to be looking at your motherboard's manual to determine which slot should be populated first when in installing fewer than 4 sticks of RAM. The correct way to install the RAM is to then locate the notch on both the RAM stick and also your motherboard's RAM sockets and align them together before then pushing the RAM into the motherboard socket. Once this is accomplished, you should be able to close the tabs if they didn't close themselves already. 
And now we move on to one of the harder parts of your BPC, and that is installing a heatsink. Now, I definitely recommend looking at the manual if you have not done so up to this point, and reading the step-by-step -step process for installing your heatsink. Now, no matter what type of CPU heatsink you go with, the next step is going to be placing thermal compound on the CPU. Now, there are various different schools of thought on how to properly apply thermal compound, but the most agreed upon standard is to then place a pea-sized drop on the center of the CPU. Now, depending on the CPU heatsink you're using, the next steps may vary, but for my PC build, if you're using the exact same parts I did, is to install the Cooler Master Hyper T2. Once you've installed the heatsink for your CPU, the next step is to install your motherboard. Now before doing this, you're going to want to take the rear I.O. panel or shield that you're going to find inside the motherboard's box and install that into the back of the case in the proper orientation. Now when installing the actual motherboard, you're definitely going to want to consult the manual again and this time to determine where to screw down your standoffs so you don't have any standoffs in places that may be interfering with the motherboard which could cause electrostatic discharge to again kill your components, which you definitely want to avoid. So once you've located where you need to install your standoffs, you're going to just take them and just screw them into place. Now this can be easily done if you have an accessory that came with your motherboard or with your case, which mine didn't, but if not, if you do, you can just screw them down with your hands and they should be fine. Now once you've accomplished this, you can then place your motherboard into the case slowly and gently to avoid contact with any of the traces on the back of the motherboard. Now once you've seated the motherboard into place, you can then use the standoff screws to then mount your motherboard to the standoffs in the case. Now, this should be relatively easy as you just use your screws and use your screwdriver to attach the two together. And once this is done, you've officially mounted your case, your motherboard into your computer. And at this point, I can definitely say you're done with the hardest part of the build, and that is definitely going to be installing the cooler and installing the motherboard and everything. The next steps are rather simple. You're now going to then take your graphics card and install into the case. To do this, you're going to remove the rear I.O. plates that are in the back of the case. Now in some cases, these are disposable and once they've been removed, they must be just thrown away. But in other cases, you may have some thumb screws on them, which can just be removed again with your thumb. Now once you've done this, you're then going to find the little tab that's in on the motherboard, the PCIe X16 slot that's closest to the top of the motherboard or whatever your motherboard's manual says is the preferred slot. Once you've located this, you're then going to push down the tab at the end of the PCIe 16 lane and push the graphics card in. It should be just like installing the RAM. Once you have the proper orientation, it should be relatively easy. The final step in installing the graphics card is going to be attaching it to the case by screwing it down to the rear I.O. The next part of this guide is now going to depend on what type of storage you went with. Now, you either could have gone with a hard drive, which are generally bigger and slower, or an SSD, which is smaller and much more expensive, but faster. Now, for my build, I just couldn't afford an SSD of a reasonable size, so I decided to go with a hard drive, a 1TB hard drive, actually, and I'm going to be saving up for an SSD later. When it comes to installing a hard drive, it's rather easy. Just find your hard drive sled that you're going to use, pull it out by pinching together the tabs and pulling it out, and then pulling it apart to then extend the sled so you can then place the hard drive next to the pins on the sled. You're then going to close the sled and place it back into the drive bay, which is relatively easy. And now you've pretty much installed a hard drive. Now, if you are going to be installing your optical drive bay, you're going to find the little twist latch at the top right hand section of the case when viewing it from the side. Here you're going to then take your latch and twist it to the center position and pull off the cover. Once that's done, you're going to go to the front of the case where you're going to find your front panel which generally can be removed by prying it off from the bottom of the case. Now make sure you check your case's directions to make sure you're pulling it off correctly because you definitely don't want to break anything. Now once you've removed that front cover, take your optical drive and slide it into place and then lock the tabs once they reach the desired mounting position. Now before you can finish off the build, you're going to need to connect your power supply. To accomplish this, find the bottom of the case which is the general mounting point for it and slide your power supply fan up or fan down, it's up to you, and push it all the way in. Once you've done this, you then have four screws that will mount it to the back of your case and hold it into place. 
Once this is done, you can then start connecting cables to the rest of your PC, which is pretty much the last stretch of the build. Now the final step is to turn on that PC. Now notice I didn't include to close the case panel, and that's because it's generally considered bad luck to close up your PC before actually turning it on. Here, just from here, just turn on the PC, pray that it works, and hopefully you guys will have a fully functional PC. If you do see your PC turn on and some lights start going off inside the case, you are good. You should start noticing if you connect it to your monitor yet. Uh, you should notice some splash screens start to show up, which are generally uh, from the motherboard manufacturer's company. And hopefully you have a fully functional PC. If you do, you can close the side panel window now and also install your Windows or whatever other operating system you plan to use. If you did get your PC to work, definitely leave a comment down below telling me how your build went as I really love to hear what you guys have to say about what happened with you guys. Now before we draw this video to an end, I want to thank you guys for watching, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give a big thumbs up down below as it really shows me that you guys are interested in this stuff and you want me to make more videos like this. If not, I, you can feel free to leave a thumbs down, but I ask that you guys give me feedback into what to improve so I can make these videos better for you guys. Also, if you really want to be notified whenever I post a new video or any new content, please subscribe to this channel by hitting that red button down below. Uh, also, if you want to check out what's going on behind the scenes and see what I do in my day-to-day -day life, you can also check out my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook account. All the social media accounts will of course be linked at the end of this video with annotations or in the description of this video again. Also, I just want to thank you guys for watching one last time. It's been me, Prince, from the Tech Prince. See ya. Moving on to the review section of this video, the generally three things people want to hear about when it comes to headphones. The look, the feel, and the sound. Now starting off with the look, these headphones of course look amazing. Besides this b-roll here, you should definitely check out these headphones in an actual store if possible because they just look great. They're filled with high quality materials including metal, metal leather, and even some soft touch plastic, but it's not overused. It's really great looking and I definitely feel it will stand the test of time.